So for me, I always start my uh, trees with the branches. And so you can see here in this folder, I've already been out to the Tinternet and I've got myself some beautiful um, pine branches and I've got pine bark texture. So what I'm gonna do first is get these four pine branches onto one texture map. So we'll go into Photoshop for that. We're gonna go File, New, and we're gonna call this uh, Branches Diffuse. Oh no, I had caps lock on. <sighs> what a mug. Branches underscore diffuse. <laughs> that's better. Okay, now the size. We'll do this as a 2K texture. That's 2048 by 2048. <laughs> Wicked. Uh, and everything's good. So we'll click OK on that. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do, just because I like knowing that I'm getting my full screen real estate, is press Control and Zero just to make sure that that's full, full size. And now I'm going to go to File, Open, and we're going to open those other four images. So let's get those all open. They'll all open across the top. And I'm just going to copy them over one at a time onto the kind of master image. So we'll start with this one. So I'm going to press Control A and Control C. So I selected all and then I copied it. And then we're going to go... How do I get back across there? Where's my main... What's going on here? <laughs> oh, there it is. Branches diffuse. Right, so we'll paste this one onto here. Lovely. And we're just going to position it somewhere off the side. I want to try and make as good use of the texture space as I can. So I'm going to resize that a little bit. Okay, so that's the first one on there. Okay, now we need another one. So we'll get this one. Control A, Control C, back to my main diffuse, and then I'm going to do Control V to paste. That'll put it on a new layer for me, which is handy so that I can uh, resize things and move things around independently at this stage. Okay, so this one kind of looks like um, it wants to go up in the top corner, I think. Okay, let's resize that. So I'm just trying to make sure I'm getting the most out of this space that I've got. Okay, so I'm done with that one. What have we got in here? I haven't got this one yet. So Control A, Control C, back into my main image, paste that in. Where's this one going to go? Where's this cheeky little one going to go? Up here, I reckon. Control T to resize, and we'll get it fairly close. Something like that. Okay, so I'm now done with that one. And this is my final one, Control A, Control C. Uh, get this one into here, Control V to paste. And this one, I think what I'm going to do is rotate this one around. So I press Control and T again to turn on the um, free transform tool. And I'll put that one there. So I can see straight away that I'm not really getting the uh, best use of space out of this. So I'm going to do a little bit of moving around. Oh. Uh, so let's just move that one down to the bottom. Okay, so I think we can do a little bit better with this one. So what happens if I rotate this around? Mm, maybe. Okay, yeah, I think I know what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to have this one. I'm going to rotate this one around as well. I don't know if I needed to rotate them around, but it feels good to do it, so this one can be a little bit smaller because it's going to be a smaller branch, and this one, nope, and this one, we're going to flip around this way, and we'll move it over here like that. It's not bad. I can still do a little bit better somewhere, I know I can. Okay, so we're going to move this one up here. Sort of into the middle. And I know that that now means that I can get a little bit more out of this one. That's better. Yeah, that's not bad. So I'm fairly happy with that. I probably could pack this a little bit tighter. But it's a 2K texture and I'll get away with it. 
and uh, I don't want to spend all day doing this because it's not a very interesting part of the video, is it? So, we've got all those um, images ready to go, so that can now be imported as one texture map when we get to the Maya part. Uh, but there's still a little bit of setting up that we need to do to make this work as a tree branch texture. So what I'm going to do first of all is just flatten uh, this image. So I've selected all layers at once. I'm going to right click and do merge layers. So they're now all beautifully merged together. And then what I'm going to do is create a new layer. So this one is going to be my alpha. And if you've never used alpha layers before, what they essentially are are black and white images that tell um, a 3D application such as Maya or Unreal Engine which parts of an image you can see and which parts of an image you want to be see-through. So for something like a tree branch, it's really useful. But we need to set that up first. So on my layer 4, which is the one with all my branches on, I'm going to... what do I want to do? Uh, instead of the magic wand tool, I'm going to use quick selection. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to select everything, as you can see, but hopefully when I let go, it's just pinged to the branches because there's nothing else on those layers. So that's really good. And then I'm going to go to my alpha layer. So you can see I've still got that selection. My marquee, uh, is it called a marquee? The wiggly line is still there. Right, so the bit that I want to be seen needs to be white. You can see that my two colours here that I have are black and white, so I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to fill um, this with the colour I want. So it's Alt and Delete to fill that part of the image with white. And everything that I don't want to be shown through, I want to be black. So to do that, I'm going to go to Select and Inverse. So now everything apart from the space with the branches in is selected. And I press Control and Delete, and that will fill with the background colour. And you can see now I've got quite a handsome looking alpha channel. If I press Control and D to deselect, this is the uh, very pretty image that it leaves me with. Which is spot on, that's exactly what I wanted it to look like. So, this is no good here though, it's just in the way and it won't actually function as an alpha channel. To make it be an alpha channel we need to go to Channels, which is just next to Layers. You can see we've got RGB, which is um, showing all three of your colour channels at once. And um, we need an alpha channel, but it's not there. So here, if you're on layers, this would be create new layer, but in channels, it creates a new channel. And because there isn't an alpha channel, that's what it will create, a new alpha channel. So we're going to go to alpha layer. We're going to press control A and control C to select everything on that layer. Back into channels, make sure you're on your alpha layer and then control and V to paste. That now is given as an alpha channel. That is going to be so amazing uh, later when we need to use it. Okay, so that bit's done. So you can see because we've been working on the alpha channel, that's the bit that's visible. Uh, but we don't want that to be visible. We want the RGB to be visible again. So I'm going to turn that on. Whenever you're previewing your alpha, um, the bits that are going to be see-through show up red, just in case you're wondering why that was red. So I'm just going to kill that because I don't need to be able to see it now. So that's the alpha setup. That's ace. So the last thing I really need to do, I can bin this alpha layer now, it's done its job. I want to make sure that I have um, a colour around the edge. Because I want to make sure that if the alpha channel, uh, if there's a bit of bleeding going on around the edge, that it's still showing the right colour. So we need to set that up now. So I'm going to create a new layer, and this is going to go behind the layer with the branches on. And we need to get some colour on here. So. I'm just going to lay down a um, kind of green colour. So I'm just going to sample kind of a middle of the road green, I think, that appears in most of the branches. And I'm going to press Control and D just to turn that selection off and Alt and Delete to fill. Uh, and that's, that's fine. That's good enough. What I will also do, though, because I just want to make sure that the colours match as much as possible, is I'm going to duplicate this layer a couple of times like that just by dragging it onto the new layer um, icon and then I'm going to put a bit of a blur on these and that will just spill these colours out a little bit over the edge, around the edge, so it should be the matching colour that we get which is what we want. So I'm going to go to filter 
Uh, down to blur, and I'll be using Gaussian blur because it's my favorite type of blur. If you haven't got a favorite type of blur, you should get one. Okay, and we just want to make sure that we're not blurring it too much. And hopefully you can see in the background that it's just causing these um, edges to be a little bit, if I just flick that on and off, you can see it's just blending a little bit better with the background, which is the effect I'm going for. So I'll do it on that layer, and I'm just going to repeat it on this layer, just to make the effect a little bit stronger. So we're going to do that blur again, Gaussian blur. Okay, let's see what effect this is having. So you can see it is adding, when I flick that on and off, it's adding to the blurred effect that we're getting, which is what we want. I might blur this one out a little bit further. Maybe not, maybe I don't like that. Yeah, that looks okay. So I'll click on OK on that. And I think that will do for me. I'm happy with that. So we're now going to save this out as a texture and then we'll move into Maya to start building the tree. So let's get this saved out. We need to save this out properly, otherwise it will be no use to us. So file, save as. So the first thing I'm going to do is save like a master version of the texture. So if there's anything wrong with it, I can come back into Photoshop, the one that's got all the layers, and I can make adjustments. So I'm going to call this one Branches Master, and that's going to stay as a Photoshop file. So I'll click on Save, and that's that one done. And then I want a compressed version, which is flattened, so only has one layer, but also has an alpha channel, so we can use that one in Maya. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. This one's going to be a Targa. Uh, target is my favorite image format. Again, you should have a favorite image format. We're going to call this one Branches Diffuse. Okay, now, this is important. When you're working with a target file and you need the alpha channel to come through, make sure alpha channels is selected. So, save that. What you also need to do is this target options box will come up and you've got a choice. How many bits per pixel do you want? And... Um, if you want the alpha channel, you need to choose 32. 24 bits um, is RGB. It's 8 times 3, so 8 bits per colour. And then 32 is another 8 bits, which is another colour, which is your alpha channel. So we need to have that one selected as well. And we'll click on OK. So that is the branches set up. What we need to do now is get into Maya and start building the branches in 3D.